Good morning and welcome to Church Beyond Walls. We are so excited that you decided to join us this morning. Our scripture reading this morning is 1 Chronicles 16. Uh, we're going to start at the 23rd verse and work our way to the 27th verse. It says, let the whole, the whole earth sing to the Lord. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord, and he is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fills his dwelling. 1 Chronicles 16, 23 through 27. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, we love you, friend. Honor you and bless your name. For this is the day you've made. We will rejoice and be glad. Would you meet us here, oh God? Would you show your presence? Would you show your gracious hand, Lord? Would you heal, deliver, and set free? Would you release the bonds, release the chains, release the shackles? Help us to release ourselves from our past. We glorify, we magnify, and honor your name. Have your way, oh God.
Oh, 
of waking up. If it wasn't for your goodness, God, we would be sleeping in our grave. But mercy said, get up again. And so you called us up again. You breathed into us the Ruach breath of God. And you made this body animated. You took this clay, this dirt clay that you made and that you molded and breathed into us the breath of life. And we became a living soul. We became living to fulfill your purpose, to operate because of your plan. We are the people that you have chosen, God, and we thank you, God. So whatever we have, whatever we do not have, God, would you supply it for us? Whatever we are not, God, would you make us that way? Mold us and make us have thine own way. You are the potter and we're the clay. Have your way, God. Help us to yield to your great hands. Yield to your gracious hands. Yield to your guiding hands, the hands that fight for us, the hands that fulfill us. Yes. Help us to surrender all to Jesus. Yes. Give it all to him. We love you, God. The, the grass withers, the flower fades, but your word yes. will stand forever. We glorify, we honor and magnify your marvelous name. This is the prayer that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So grateful for your presence on today. Uh, this is another day that God has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. The psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. But he does not say just to magnify him just because. He says, he says I magnify him because I sought him. And then when I saw him, not only did I, I did not only that, but he heard me. Yeah, and not only did he hear me, but he delivered me, yeah. not only from some of my troubles, but, but from all of my troubles. Yeah. The text says in Psalms 34, around the 17th, the 18th, and the 19th verse, that many, Sister Mo, are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah. Not just the same trouble, but different various troubles. Manifold troubles, colorful troubles, but God is a God that delivers me up out of my trouble. But then God says, I'm going to take you through the trouble and I'm going to show you how great I am. Come here, Daniel. Daniel was in the lion's den and we found out that our God is not only the great I am that I am, but he's a lion tamer. We found out that not only that, but he's a fire insulator. Come here, three Hebrew boys. He was not uh, looking on the fire, but he was in the fire. And I submit to you today, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you are facing, God is in it with you. He's a very present help in the trouble. He's not looking on saying, uh, you'll be all right, but he's in it with you. The Lord is my shepherd. I can't walk. I shall not walk. He making me to lie down. He leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Not because he's with me, but thou, thou, did thou are you. Then he starts to make it personal. He talks about this God who is eternal. This God is who did it, that is that is forever good. He talks about him, but then he goes from talking about him, he starts talking to him. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. Surely your goodness and your mercy will follow me all the days of my life. So he talks about he talks about God and then he starts to talk to God. To God. This thing is not only uh, 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 powerful but it's personal. It's a personal it's a, he's my personal Jesus. My personal Lord and Savior. Lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Even God loves to come in when folks are excited. I don't, I don't, I don't think the Lord hangs around people that are sad, somber. And, 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 and he, listen, he says, lift up your heads. He even says, I lift up your heads. God responds to a person that is joyous. 
Why should I be joyous when I lost my loved one? Because God is still alive. Why should I feel like getting up? Because God is here. What? Why? 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 That's not the question. Why? But who? <laughs> who is the response? Who? Who is it that's going to help me? God. That's that. that that's that's what we. That's what. That's that's my motivation. He is my motivation. We started a series last week. We are trying to end the fifth chapter of uh, of Acts. I'm going to read um, part of it, part of the earlier part, and then we're going to read it all the way down. I may pick and choose some of the verses. We're trying to conclude because we started a series, This Life, and the section of this series is a, a productive life, a productive life, a productive life. Uh, the text says um, that in verse 30, uh, I'm going to read, Acts 5 and 30, I'm going to read down. I'm going to try to get as much done today as I can. I, I want to move on. But Acts 5 and 30, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. The text says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Watch the text. Peter is cold with it. Whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him, God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has gifted or given to those who obey him. Uh, verse 33 of the fifth chapter says, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one in the council, Sister Paris, stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a moment. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. And then verse 35 says, and he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Thudius rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. He, uh, verse 37, he says, I'm going to further this narrative I'm going to give you my reasoning for what I'm about to say. After this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him, he also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. Now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. I, I like that. Yeah. Lest you even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. And they let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy Watch the text to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, we want to finish and try to work on finishing this idea, a productive life. Uh, uh, we saw in the text that the reason why we cannot be stopped is because the Jesus in me is greater than anything outside. Now, anything Jesus uh, and the devil are not equal opposites. I, I think we need to understand that. The, uh, let me just say it like this. The devil is uh, God's devil, meaning what? He can only do what God allows him to do. He says to uh, Satan, the Bible says that the Lord had a business meeting in, in the book of Job, and he talks, he, he said the sons of God came to present themselves, and the devil came 
also. And, and just for the record, the devil does have access to heaven. He has not been uh, condemned to hell as of yet. He, the Bible says he's walking around. Peter says, help me, Holy Ghost. In the New Testament, the devil walketh around as a warring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Peter says, resist him steadfast in the faith, realizing that you're not the only one the devil is messing with. You're not the long ranger. We all going through something. Some of us just have learned how to not let it all hang out. And so, and so because, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything that I need. I have armor. I have, I have the word. I have worship. I have people in the brotherhood. I ain't going to go down without a fight from the Holy Ghost. It may feel like I'm going to go down, but, 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 but the Bible is clear that the Lord is, uh, uh, his favor is on my life. His hands are fighting for me. It ain't going to go down without a Holy Ghost fight. And, and I find, and listen, the text teaches that my God is the one that runs the entire universe. He is in control over my circumstances, over my ministry, over my problems, over my diseases, over my wife. What am I saying here? I ain't got to be watching my wife to know that God has got my back. I can go to work. There was a time that I couldn't go to work, Brother Sam, because I was concerned with what was going on with my wife. And when we're overly concerned about loved ones, about things, we cannot walk with God because we're too busy dibbling and dabbling in God's business. Let God handle it and you take a rest. Let God Listen, can't nobody do more than God allows them to do. You're not greater than God. Why is it that you feel if you go along, if your daughter rides with you, you can keep them from the accident? Baby, you're not that strong. It doesn't matter if you have them. God is the one that gave you, gave them to you. Let God run his business. Don't, don't try to fight it. Vengeance is God. What our job is to turn, the, the song says, I turned them over to Jesus and he worked it out. That's what it is. We were trying to work out what we cannot work out. Let God handle the things of God. What am I saying here? This is bigger than you. God is trying to show you, you are not that great. You are not that power. You're not sovereign. You cannot do what you want to do, but I, the Lord, do all these things. So, so we're talking about a productive life. Let me just say something. Anytime we go to work for God, you can expect opposition. Come here, come here, Nehemiah. When he began to build the wall, they, they ridiculed him. They, they, they talked about him in front of the builders, but Nehemiah's response, Sister Mo, was the God of heaven will help us so we will arise and build. I'm not worried. I'm not frustrated. I, listen, if you're concerned about numbers, get out of the ministry. If you're concerned about money, get out of the ministry. I found out that I serve a God that has an unseen strategy. And so, and so, and so we are overly worked up about the resource. But baby, I'm finding out that if you stay focused on the source, the resource may dry up. What am I saying here? It was good while it lasted. I loved you while I could, but if you should decide, I know you want to leave me, and I'm and listen, and I'm willing to let you go. I'm not begging for your sympathy. I know I rewrote the song, but sometimes folks got to just keep on moving. God will use them for the moment, but you can't hold on to people like that. You will be frustrated. And listen, I can't hold on to my wife with a death grip. If she decides to walk away, I got the Lord on my side. So the Bible says that, that they have murdered Jesus. Now, the, the, the word it uses is the word annihilated. He, Peter says, y'all murdered Jesus. Y'all murdered 
Jesus. Now, the Romans were involved with the murdering of Jesus. The religious leaders were involved with the murder of Jesus. The Gentiles are the Romans. These officials, these kings, listen, the religious system. Uh, Acts 2 said, why does the heathen rage? Uh, that, why do the people imagine a vain thing? And all of these are groups of people. Watch this here. Help me work here. These are groups of people that crucify Jesus. What am I saying here? Unless God changes your mind and your heart, you would crucify him yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. God has to be the one that changes you. It, 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 listen, I'm telling you, if God don't give you the gift of repentance, God don't turn you around, you would crucify Jesus today. But, 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 but thank God for his grace and his mercy. So he says, you murder Jesus by hanging him on a tree. Jesus was not on his deathbed. He, 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 no, no, no. He was murdered in the first degree. They knew. They said, give us Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. We don't want, we get rid of Jesus. And listen, even though it was harsh, if Jesus did not die, we could not live. But what they did was working hand in hand with God. It is the doctrine of concurrence. I'm going to teach it and I'm going to preach it regardless. So now watch the text. They say this. So, so we find out that Jesus was murdered. I want to just say something to you real quick. That trouble could not stop Jesus. He, he said, I came for this reason. I like that. Uh, being set up really could not stop Jesus. And a lot of times, Sister Brenda, we are being set up seemingly. But the setup actually really is a come up. You, 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 you're not. Joseph said, you intended to harm me. But God has worked all things out for the good. Nothing you can do. God takes all of the negative, all of the lies, all of the adultery, all of the divorce, all of the diseases, all of the issues, and he works them out for the good of those who love God and those who are the call according to his purpose. When they lie on you, it won't prosper. Many, listen, the afflictions come. The Bible says the weapons are, listen, weapons will be formed, but, but, but they won't succeed. Right now, there's weapons aimed at me. What kind of weapons, pastor? Weapons of discrediting my name. But I found out the Holy Ghost has a way of vindicating you. I can speak that night because I handle my business properly. If I do it God's way, it doesn't matter what you say. You can't stop me. Matter of fact, go ahead and talk about me. Laugh at me. Tell them to watch the CD. Watch the DVD. Because what God is going to do, y'all, listen, somebody is lying on me right now, and God will make me, let them watch the DVD, watch the YouTube, watch the TikTok, and they'll find out, oh, I'm going to follow him, I'm going to be a member. You meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. Glory to God, glory to God, I will win. Why? Because God is the winning one on the inside of me. Yeah, I can't stay down. Listen, it was the cross. At the cross, it was the cross and the grave that Jesus was elevated from. It, it, we, listen, in order to experience resurrection, we've got to die. But it is still the productive life. And we're going to take cues from Jesus. We always listen to relatives, and that's cool. We listen, but, but if we want to live a life that pleases God, a productive life, we've got to take our examples from Jesus. Jesus was abandoned. Jesus was alone. But he said, the Father stood with me. Yeah, this is so, 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 so. If we're going to live this life, let's see how Jesus handled this life, Sister Mo. And I and you keep on talking about you, 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 you're blessing me, you're hooking me up. You keep on, keep on, keep it coming. I'm telling you, we've got to get to the place in our lives where we can embrace the storm, the clam. Help me, Holy Spirit. Uh, we'll, we'll embrace the irritating sand. And so it's irritating. So what this does, the oyster rather, what the oyster does is releases a substance 
that allows it to embrace the irritation and, and, and because what it does is it closes up on the irritation and it hugs it. I'm going to tell you something today. Hug the lies. Hug the problem. You keep showing up. You keep being a blessing. You keep When they lie on you, you just do what's right. And, and, and hug the opposition. You just hug it and God help me to hold on. Help me to keep on building and watch what God does. Even though he slays me, I will trust him. And so embrace it, embrace it. And what happens is when you embrace what is meant to destroy you, the irritation, it produces a organic pearl of great price. And, and so I think what we want is elevation, but the way to be elevated is on the ground level. Oh, I'm going somewhere. So, 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 so being set up couldn't stop Jesus. Death could not stop him. Why? God Elevate them. That was the road to promotion. Promotion. We're talking about a productive life. Productive. Now, the murdering of Jesus was not an accident. I need to tell you that. It was God's deliberate plan that had been worked out in the boardroom of heaven. Acts 2, 22 through 24 says, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. Watch this here. We're going to find out who is the one that's handing us over to our enemies. Who is the one that's uh, dedicating or committing or recommending us to go, recommending us to go through troubles? The text says in Acts 2.23, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan. Why am I going through this? Come here, Job. The Bible says that God said, Satan, what are you doing? He says, I'm walking up and through and fro through the earth. I'm trying to wreak havoc. And the Lord says, have you considered my servant, Job? He's my boy. He, he's my friend. He loves me. He does good. And you know what the devil said? I, I did consider him. I did try to get in, but you got him protected. You're providing. You're making a way. You, 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 you're working things out. I can't get in. But the Lord says, I recommend Job. Really quickly, can God recommend you to be tested. And, that, and if you're going through trouble, God is the one that set it up because God has a goal. He wants to cause you to be a productive believer. I want to promote you. I want to push you. But the way I push you, the way you lose weight is not by getting in the mirror, not by putting on Nikes, not by putting on a sweatband, but it's by going and working out. You can't work out with all your friends. This is a private session between you and God. I find out at the fitness place that I go to, Brother Sam, they don't work out. They just show up and they be laughing and joking. It's too many people. And God just want, I found this out yesterday. God said, I just want I just want to get you by myself. Get away from your friend. I need you by yourself with me and you. We've got to go through some things. We've got to work out something. That's why we can be in a crowd, uh, a, a room full of people and feel lonely. You're not alone. God is there. God said, you two, you're relying on the wrong people. Trust me. Follow me. Walk with me. Talk to me. Depend on me. Look to me. Lean on me. I will be a bridge over your troubled waters. Watch the text. So the murdering of Jesus Christ was not an accident. What you're going through is not an accident. Help me say this with all the voice you've got. What I'm going through... Come on, y'all. Come on, everybody in here. Come on, Brother Sam. Say what I'm going through. What I'm going through is not an accident. It's, not an accident. it's, on, purpose it's on purpose from God. From God. Oh, you know, I don't, you, you don't, you're not saying it like you believe it. Watch this here. Listen, Job 1, 6 through 10 talks about it. I've got to read this from the message. It says, one day when the angels came to report to God, Satan, who was designated the designated accuser came along with them. God singled out Satan and said, what have you been up to? Satan answered God, going here and there, checking things out on earth. God said to Satan, have you noticed my friend Job? <laughs> There's no one quite like him. This is God's 
estimation of Job. Honest and true to his word, totally devoted to God and hating evil. Verses 9 through 10, Satan retorted, so do you think Job does all that out of the sheer goodness of his heart? Why? No one ever had it so good. Look at you pamper him like he's your little pet. Make sure nothing bad ever happens to him or his family or his possessions. You bless everything that he has and does. He cannot lose. Do you realize that the blessings of God is made so that you won't lose? We don't really realize how good we got it. But God every now and then allows the devil in on us to make us better. Uh, sickness make me better. Whatever it takes, if need be, I'm in manifold testings. Watch it so that the trying of my faith will be found precious. And you know the thing about gold, the only way to prove that you're made out of good quality metal is putting heat on it. If you put heat on certain metals, it'll turn it colors. And watch this here. Bad metals even make your skin turn colors. I've never had a piece of gold that made my skin turn colors. But heat only makes it better. Trouble make it better. Sicknesses make you better. And what did God say? If it takes that for you to be better, I'm going to lay it on you, baby. I'm going to hurt you to do you good. It is still a productive life. Let's go on. Listen to this. I want to show you something in the text that the murder and the things that we deal with is not an accident. Luke 22, 31 through 33, the Lord says, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you. And the response to his trouble, Jesus says, I pray for you. God is not getting you out of every struggle you go through. He says in Luke 22, 31 through 33, I Pray for you. What is prayer? Getting me in alignment and getting my mind right with what God is going to do. You can't twist him. You can't change him. You have to get in agreement with him. Uh huh. And so watch this here. Watch this here. Uh, and then I wish we could learn to accept the will of God for us like Jesus did. Why is it good to accept his will? Because he's going to do what he wants to do anyway. There's a will we call, the Greek word is thelema, is what God wishes or desires. He's not desiring that any should perish. And then there's a word boule, B-O-U-L-E, which means the irrevocable will of God. There are some things that you cannot change, you cannot avoid. God is going to do it whether you like it or not. Why? Because God has a plan and he is not going to allow any anyone to stop what he is going to do. So it would make it better on me, Brother Sam, that if I could just simply accept what God is going to do. He says, Paul, it is hard for you to kick against my will. I'm greater than you. I know more than you. I've got it all under control. So watch this here. We, If we could just ever learn to accept the will of God for our lives like Jesus did, oh, what a happy day. 1 Peter 2, 19 through 23. We're going to make some headway, I promise, but I've got to read this. For Peter says, for this finds God's favor. If because of conscience toward God, someone endures hardships and suffering unjustly. Some of us are enduring what we, we ran our mouths a little too much. They said stop and you went on, slow down, they got a ticket. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't suffering for Christ. You suffer for yourself. But 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 Paul Peter says, for what credit is it if you sin and are mistreated and endure it? But if you do good and suffer and so endure, this finds favor with God. For this you were called, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example for you to follow in his steps. He committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. When he was lied on, maligned, he did not answer back. When he suffered, he threatened no retaliation but committed himself to God, himself to God who judges justly. Watch this, who is always right. Listen, we've got to learn how to say this. I know this is a hard pill to swallow. It's a bitter pill to swallow. Whatever I go through, you've got to learn how to say, God, you're right. 
You're right. You're right. I don't know why. I don't know why you're doing it, but God, you're right. Trouble, you're right. Trouble in my home, you're right. Trouble on my job, you're right. Finances are not blooming and booming. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sickness, you're right. Trouble, you're right. Trouble in my life. God, you are right. That's what the text is teaching us. That's getting the mindset of the Lord Jesus. Beloved, God is always right. You know why we can't see him right? Because we haven't went over to Romans 12, 1 and 2. J.B. Phillips puts it like this. Lost this, Sister Paris. I love this. With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, he says, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give your bodies as a living sacrifice consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good. Meets all his demands and moves towards the goal of true maturity. The reason why we cannot say God is right no matter the circumstance is because my mind is messed up. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies. And he said, don't be conformed this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The reason why some fools don't go to work and think they're going to get paid because they got a bad mindset. The reason why, why? Eyes don't respect their husbands because they ain't been into the mind of God, which we get out of the word of God. If you can get the mindset of God, the attitude of God, life will be so much better. You will win in every circumstance and you will be productive in every transaction when you get the mindset of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said God is always good. I don't care what you're dealing with. He's good. Lose your job? He's good. Church ain't full? He's good. God is good. How often? All the time and all the time. God is good. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 says, And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you are abound in every good work. God is good all of the time. But not only is he good, Sister Natalie, all the time, but God is always faithful. There's some things, there's what we call the alwaysness of God. He's always good. He is always faithful. Lamentations 3, 22 through 24 says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Not only is he always good, Sister Brenda, but he's always faithful. Not only good, not always faithful, not only is he always faithful, but he's always there. My, 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 in my preaching voice, Hebrews 13, 5 through 6, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God said, not my mother, not my father, God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you so that you will have bold confidence that, and say that the Lord is my helper. So God is, God is always good. God is always faithful. God is always there. And beloved, God is always listening. Yes, he is. When Daniel prayed, he said, from the moment that you prayed, in other words, I heard you the first time. Some of us have prayed and it hasn't changed. Some of us have fasted and it hasn't changed. Some of us are still struggling and it hasn't changed. But the Bible says, keep on praying. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. To so everyone that asks it, we'll get. Everyone seek it, we'll find. And you know what God said? He said, be encouraged. I heard you the first time. I heard you. I, ain't not blessed. I heard you. I heard you. 
But when the time is right, I'm going to make a move that won't nobody be able to stop. God said, I heard you the first time. That's a hashtag. You keep on praying. Prayer means that I trust God. I ain't came through yet, but I know something about his character. He's a good, he's always good, always faithful, always forgiving, always there, a very present help. Psalms 46 says, in the time of trouble. Listen, the murdering of Jesus was a deliberate plan. It was orchestrated, listen, watch this here, it was planned by God and allowed to be carried out. They, murdering Jesus was not an accident. Jesus wasn't aloof to that. But you know what the problem is? We're aloof to what we go through. Why this? Why that? Beloved, you cannot deal with nothing that God has not allowed and ordained. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear me knocking? If you're going through cancer, God knew about it. It came across his desk. You think, it, you think nothing can happen. This was the Jewish mentality. If it happened, God allowed it to happen. Oh, happy day if I can understand whatever I'm dealing with, God could have blocked it, but he said, let it go. Let it happen. He's the curator. He causes things to happen. Why? To do you good. Why? To develop you. Why? To make you productive. Why? To stabilize you. Why? To make you successful. But if you're going to be fortified, you got to go through trouble, trials, tribulation. And that's a good God. He says, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Those he loves, he corrects. He chases so that they can be fruitful and productive. As parents, if we don't correct our children, we hate them. And God said, I'm never going to be a, I, I'm a good father. I correct those that are. And if you go without correction, you are a bastard. Your dad is not, your dad is the devil. So, so I would rather get wood to know. That's, that's what the text says. He, he said, you're illegitimate. You ain't got a daddy. And I'm definitely not your daddy. Listen, so let's go. So the death of Jesus was deliberate by design. Number two, the death of Jesus was his destiny. Mark 10, 43 through 45 says, the son of man has come to deliver and, and to set the captives free. This is my destiny. This is, if, if, I wish we could accept the fact that what I'm going through is an unavoidable situation. What I'm dealing with on the day, none of y'all know about. It's my destiny. It's deliberate. It's what I've got to go through to get through to the next level, to be productive. I have to go through it. Yea, and all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. But Paul says, listen, I know you're going through, but these are light afflictions compared to the glory, compared to the productivity. You want to be great, you've got to go through trouble. Want a story without a text. It don't work that way. We want to look good without going through the hood. You got to go through the struggle, baby. You got to deal with trouble. The only reason why I can talk with conviction is because some of the things that I say, I've been through it. I know what it's like to have a failed marriage. And I know what it's like to have a vibrant marriage. Why? Because I went through all the stages. I know the emotions. I know the abandonment. I know, I know the ups. I know the downs. I know all of that. I can speak with conviction because I've experienced it. And when a person has dealt with a struggle and helping somebody dealing with the same struggle, they're powerful because I know what it took. I know what I've been through and I know my God will bring me out because he did it for me. And if he did it for me, he's got the power to do it in your life. So, so I'm not, I, 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 listen, I, I know what I'm talking about because I've been through it. This ain't my first rodeo. I've been through it. So my trouble, according to Jesus, was deliberate from God. It was the destiny of Jesus. Are you hearing me? And not only that, but it was the it was Jesus' devotion. Watch this here, which he and the Father took delight in. This is gonna be, this is a hard concept right here. So what I'm dealing with, Sister Brenda, is deliberately set up by God. Not only that, it's my destiny. I've got to walk this road. <laughs> it's the road less traveled. Not only that, 
But then my attitude has to be taken from Jesus. It, listen, because it's my, uh, my, 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 it's been deliberate from God, it's my destiny, watch this here, and I have to have the attitude of devotion about it, like the oyster. I have to embrace it. Watch this here. If we don't learn how to embrace what we're dealing with, it will make us resentful. It will make us mean. It will make us ugly. It will make us rude. It will make, it, we, we, and nobody wants to be our friends. That's, that's in my own personal commentary. Watch this here. But Jesus took delight in what he went through because he was aware that God had did it for the good of everyone else. Watch this here. Psalm 40 and 8 says, I want to do what pleases you, oh my God. Your law dominates my thoughts. Do you want to please God to the point it will cost you your life? I'll cross the hottest desert. I travel near or far. That sounds real good. But do you really want to devote yourself to God to the point where it costs you everything? Matthew 3, 17, the Lord says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Let me tell you what, what pleases God. When we go through our trouble, when we deal with our pain, with a pleasant attitude. You know, the, the, the story Sister Natalie had brought this up to her brother is couched in the Old Testament. And the prophet Elisha says, is it well? That's not, they wrote the song from the text and the, and the son that was prophesied that, that listen, that, that was promised to her died. And this lady says, it is well. Who in here has the bold faith to declare my bills are not paid, my body don't feel good, the numbers don't look good, trouble in my mind, trouble in my life, but it is well. It's well. It's well. It's well. It's well. And you know what it's well saying? Yes, Lord, I surrender. Why? Because you know what you're doing. You know how you're going to do it. And when I come out of this, the son says, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I will be productive. I'll come forth as pure gold. That's what the, that's what the son says. Listen to this. Jesus lost his will in the will of his father. You know why we're dealing with stuff? You know why the struggle is? We want our will and God said, I want my will. So it's a power struggle between me and God. Now, now look, common sense. Let's, 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 let's do the process of elimination. If God wants his will to be done and I want my will to be done, I'm wrestling with God. Who, who, perhaps who do you think will win? God wants his way. I want my way. Who going to win? I'm going to use all my free will. I'm going to run, but I can't hide. Come here, Jonah. Jonah said, I ain't telling them nothing about you because you're too gracious. You will forgive them, and those are my enemies. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know what the problem is? God wants us to do his will, but the will that he wants us to do is humbling to us. I don't want to ask them. I don't want to help them because I don't like them. But what if God said help them anyways? Look, encourage them. Every time I encourage them, they get this condescending attitude. God said, don't, don't worry about it. Help them. I want to be used. We want to be used our way, on our terms. Jesus lost his will in the will of his father. Jesus was on a mission that was impossible for everyone. Jesus' motivation was ministering and meeting mankind's most vital need, the saving of his or her soul. Jesus' life this, as he always knew, it was not what mattered the most to him. If you're going to have a productive life, you got to realize you're on mission for God. Jesus said, I came to do my father's will. Whose will are you here for? Your will or his will? Jesus was motivated by doing what his father said. He says, my meat and drink is to do the will of him that has sent me. I am motivated. I am directed. I am driven to do the will of God. Some of us are here to do our own will. <laughs> Listen, Jesus' life as he knew it, as he always knew it, was not what mattered the most to him. What matters the most to you? having it your way, eating what you want to eat, keeping all your money in your pocket. Don't put your clothes on my side. 
Why, why, listen, listen, listen. Why, why can the husband have a, have at least a, 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 a quarter of the closet? You got, a, you got, you got the whole closet. We so selfish, so self-centered, and, and when we're selfish and self-centered, we are self-sabotaging. If your world, if the biggest thing in your world is you, you got a very small world, and that's why we're not happy because all we think about is me, myself, and I. Even married, married folks, husband, all he think about is his gadgets, what he want to do, what I want to do. Why get married if it's all about you? Listen to me. Jesus' life, as, we, as he knew it, was not the most thing that it was not the most important thing. What matters the most to you? Listen, Jesus knew who he was. He, he knew about his deity. He's the almighty God. He knew that he had total dominion. He knew that he was deserving of adoration and acknowledgement, but he left his glorious home just to save you and me. What's the most motivating thing in your life? Does your life matter the most? Listen to this. Jesus did not forget where he came from. Glory. I came from glory. And listen, and where he was headed was glory. Listen, which encouraged him to fully accept and face all that was in between glory. You hear me? God has a glorious plan. It came from heaven. Watch this here. And when God gets done with my life, it's going to be a glorious end. But on the way from what God said, which is perfect in the heavens, and being perfected in my life is, a, is, is the in-between. Glory. Struggle. Strain. Trials. Problems. Lies. But all things are working together for the good. Jesus knew exactly who he was. You know what our problem is? We don't know our mission. We're confused on what our motivation is. And our lives are the only thing that matters. Paul said, I don't count my life dear to me so that I can do his will. And watch this here. If we are not sure where we come from, we don't know who we are, whose we are, we'll miss being and having a productive life. Do you know who you are? You've got to know who you are. If the moment you can settle the fact, I know God has a purpose for my life, it came from him, and then it's what, and then look, and the end game, the end goal is perfection, it's glory, and then that will help you deal with that process between where it comes from and where I'm going, the glory. You've got to know who you are. That's why we get mad. They didn't call me pastor. They didn't call me bishop. I'm not apostle. You know what? If you know who you are, don't matter what they call you. Jesus knew who he was. Can somebody tell me who he was? Jesus knew seven things about himself, Sister Mo. He knew he was the almighty God. He started saying stuff like, I am that I am. We see seven statements that are made in the book of John. He knew who he came from. He knew where he was going. He knew that he was going to have to go through in between this and that. He knew the presence of his father. Do you know that God has a purpose for your life, a plan for your life, and a productive life has to go through the process of crushing, the process of thrashing. Listen, listen. Myrrh is a gum resin that you, in order you have to thrash the tree and when it's thrashed when it's beat it releases a fragrant perfume what am I saying when I go through trials it pleases God when I go through with the right attitude and when I go through with the right attitude when I'm going through my cancer and encouraging others I am producing something in someone else hold on God is helping me keep your head up God is with me but listen my life the crushing of my life is the furtherance of my life what God is doing in my life is share with others. We want productivity but we've got to go through the crushing. We've got to go through tribulation. We've got to go through trials. Listen, when we go through, we'll get through and God is in the business of promotion. You want to write that down, but you've got to know who you are. Jesus says in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Jesus says in John 8 and 12, 
I am the light of the world. Jesus says in John 10 and 7, I am the door. He says in John 10, 11 and 14, I am the good shepherd. In John 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. In John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 15 and 1, he says, I am the true vine. You've got to know who you are, whose you are. You've got to know your why. Do you know why you are here? If you don't know whose you are, you don't know what your purpose is, you will not have a productive life. And listen, wrap your mind around it. You will go through trouble. Elevation does not happen without trouble. What good is it to go to, to, to the top of the ladder? You know what we want to do? We're going to go to the bottom, from the bottom to the top of the ladder with no rudders in between. You know what happens when we go to the top of the ladder with no rudders in between? We fall right down to the bottom. And you know what the every step is, uh, uh, sister, sister Brenda? That's wisdom education, experience. So when I get up here, I'm not proud, cocky, and acting like a jackass. Yeah, I said it. Tell your own world. I don't care. Listen, when we, we got to go step by step, because listen, had I not went through the process to get this home, I would have been an arrogant something. You know what? I don't even hardly talk about it because of what I learned on the way here. When we go through the process of pain, when we get to the position, we just, we just ask, oh, hey, how you doing? We can talk to people. We're not arrogant, got our head up in the sky. Listen, he is the I am of your life. The I am. Jesus knew who he was. Song, I'm going to end with this and we'll finish. But the song by James Fortune says, you are everything. I have everything. I have everything I need. Thank you, Jesus. You are my strength when I am weak. The great I am, the great I am provides for me and all my needs are supplied. The great I am that I am is everything. Watch this here, is everything. The great I am, hallelujah. Say, he, he says he's more than enough. He is more than enough of me for me. You're whoever I need you to be. You're the I am you are. You're our provider, God. You're whoever I need you to be with diseases and AIDS and, and cancer and vision problems. You are our healer. You are I am you are. You're whoever I need you to be. You're the holy one of Israel. You are the I am you are. You are my healer help in times of trouble. You are the I am. You are my friend when I am lonely. You are my bread when I am hungry. You are my great provider, my holy king, my righteous healer. I give my praise to you. You are, you are. We worship you, daddy God. You are, you are. You're the one. You're, you're the I am. You are. We give you glory. You are the strong tower. You you are the I am, the great I am. But in order for Jesus to have that productive life, he had to be pierced. And when he was pierced, blood proceeded, blood and water gushed out. You've got to be crushed to be further. You know what? You know, we, we, we don't want to be expanded. Trouble causes us to be liquid and fluid. When we go through trouble, it helps us to be productive. It helps us to share experiences. Trouble creates experiences, right? And then I can share that. I am sharing my life with others. Create a productive life in others. That is the productive Christian life. Let me just say this. The Bible says, the Bible says I'm almost done. God is in the promotion business. When Jesus was murdered, he exalted him. Do you know God is in the pro promotion business? He humbled Nebuchadnezzar, saved him and restored him and added more glory. That's production. Blessing. He harmed Job with diseases. But the Bible says, have you heard of the end of Job? He had twice as much as he had. He was already good, but he had even more. After he went through his persecution. He abandoned Joseph and then made Joseph ride in the second chariot. God is in the promotion business. First Peter 5, 6 
through 11. And I end, end with this. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up. That's exaltation. That's promotion in due time. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Watch this. Resist him standing firm in the faith. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Why am I going through what I'm going through? Stop making your pain about you. Stop making it all about you. You're going through to help somebody else. You're learning something personal about God so that you can share with somebody else. Watch them. Watch the text. Watch the text. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The productive Christian life. Gamaliel said, leave him alone. You might be going against God. Hallelujah. We love you. We're praying for you. We will see you at this same time next week. Excuse our uh, lateness, but I had to get it out. I had to get it out. I want to encourage you to be a part of this local body. Listen, where you are needed and we are needed in your life. <laughs> no coincidences, all consequential. And God has a purpose that is bigger than each individual. And it takes all of us to do his work where you will be, listen, you're needed in church beyond walls, Beaumont, California. And then also we want to give you an opportunity to share your uh, 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 treasure, your treasure, your talent is your ministry. Your treasure is your money. Ministry must be done. It needs money to function, money to, to fund it, money to push it. You can do so via our cash app platform to the dollar sign church. Beyond Walls, via Venmo at Church Beyond Walls. You can give via PayPal to 951-522-2125. You can also give the Zelle via Zelle to that same number, 951-522-2125. We love you. We are praying for you. And we will see you again this same time next week. Share this and help us do the work of evangelists.